This is the most official podcast we've ever done. I can sense it now. There was clapping. There was that, you know, like that movie, that old school movie thing where you're like, take two. That oh thing God. came out. We are so official right now. I feel like we're leveling up in life. We are. We are. All right. Great. Exciting. I love this mug, by the way. Sumo I know. Mug. It's, a, it's a Buddha. You see that? Yeah. It's like a Buddha. Sumo, not Buddha. What am I talking about? Yeah, I'm about? like, Sumo. that's the opposite. Yeah, Sumo sorry. is like the opposite of Buddha. I'm sorry. This is not a good good representation of how my brain's going to work for this podcast, but this is, hopefully, uh, hopefully it gets better. This is going downhill fast. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm very excited because I have gotten a ton. I hope you have too, but I always get a ton of good feedback when we do podcasts together. So for whatever reason, I think people like us chatting together, which makes me happy. Uh, Same. Cause I like okay, chatting good. with you. Yeah. And it's, it's been fun. a little while and we have lots of things to talk about. Um, but first, maybe before we get into like the real meat and potatoes of what we're <laughs> going to talk about, um, how's life where you are? Like, how is everything? Good. Um, I mean, yeah, that's like good is like the word lately. Someone asked me this earlier. I'm like, I don't really know. Like it's been pretty much the same compared to Um, what I guess. Yeah, I know. Right. I mean, I feel like, well, it's been almost a year since COVID started. Right. And I feel like it feels like yesterday. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, but things are hopefully moving in the right direction. Um, I'm in San Diego, obviously. So, Things are like opening up again. I mean, my gym's been open for a while, so um, I haven't had that issue, but I know uh, you're going to chat about that in a second. Um, So yeah, things are good. I'm just excited. Like I've been, obviously we've been geeking out the last few months, kind of preparing for what we're going to talk about. And Mm -hmm. I just love everything about what we're doing. And so it just makes me excited to like get to work every day and like create and just Mm -hmm. geek out. So It's true. It is very good to have a goal and a project that you enjoy when you're in like the groundhog day of life where like every day is exactly the same. Um, I will say though, my morale and mood has improved significantly this week because our restrictions have lessened. I think I told you this earlier. Um, the gyms opened. I went to a restaurant last night, sat inside. Someone else made me food. I went to the gym. I've gone to the gym like three days this week. And like, I basically looked at a weight and then I was like, I'm good. I'm tired now. Like I (laughs) barely did anything. My expectations for myself are so, so low. Um, but I'm somebody too, who, and this is maybe we can get into this when we talk about some mindset stuff later. I, I really am not that frustrated. Like the, I was frustrated not being able to go to the gym, but going back and knowing that I'm starting like really far behind, maybe where I was six, eight months ago, I really am not like, oh man, it sucks. I can't squat, you know, what I squatted like eight Mm -hmm. months ago. I like the challenge. I'm like, here we go again. Like maybe I have a chance to rewire some things that weren't great. Maybe I have a chance to focus on something else that's going to be fun. And and I had a little bit of a refresher time where I wasn't in the gym because, you know, you take it for granted when you're there all the time. And so the fact that I went in and kind of like struggled my way through a very mediocre workout. (laughs) I kind of looked at it like it was kind of exciting. I'm like, all right, like I'm back in this. Let's, let's do it. Let's see what I can do. So, um, yeah, yeah, but it just makes me feel so much better. Like my energy is so much better. My like feeling about the world is so much better. And like, it's still deeply, deeply winter here (laughs) and will be for a while. I was telling you offline about the killer icicle that I'm just like waiting to drop outside of my window. And I'm so scared of, um, but yeah, like I just, I feel, I'm feeling more hope. And I feel like that normally happens around springtime. And it happened last Mm -hmm. spring when like things started looking better and they were a little bit better in the summer. And then it kind of went another way, but, um, I'm, I'm feeling good. Like we've got a lot of work on our plates. That's really fun. (laughs) And I get to go back to the gym and like try some of it out and stuff. So it's been, yeah, it's been really cool. So I feel better generally. I'm less miserable. People, people (laughs) are like, okay, I can sense that you're back at the gym because you're not. Yeah. And it's beneficial to people don't think about like when you take, you know, so much time off, you actually kind of give yourself like, oh, like, I get a little bit more newbie gains now because I've taken so much time off. Now my body's not used to what I've been doing. So you know, let's, let's go for it. Obviously mm-hmm. with a smart approach, which we're going to talk about now. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's awesome. 
And the one thing that I've been really proud of this week, and this goes into sort of like maturity and training maturity, which we can talk about, is in past times when I would take time off or I'd even just take time off of a certain kind of training or movement or whatever. And then I'd go back and because I have all of these years of working out and training, and maybe my mind would tell me you can go back in and do this much volume, this much weight. And then I'd be like incapacitated because (laughs) obviously, right. And so this week I was like, I am not doing that. I am not going to go in and just like, let my ego dictate what happens and be so sore and miserable and then not be able to work out for a week. And I went, I worked out three days in a row and I feel like good. Like I'm a little bit, you know, like a little bit tight in some places, whatever, but I am not nearly as sore as I probably would have been in like previous times. So I'm like, all right, I'm actually like not being an idiot about this. Like I was really (laughs) proud of myself. I'm like, all right, I'm like learning some things. So anyway, I was pretty happy about that. And you're, you're, and like you said, you're learning, like you're educated on that. And that's like a huge thing. Like once you understand these different concepts, once you, it really becomes like ingrained in your mind, you really understand like, okay, this is what I'm doing to, to, to reach this goal or, or just understanding the why behind it. It's like, makes it so much easier to be like, okay, yeah. Like I'm not going to go balls to the wall, back squatting what I did maybe a year ago. Like that's obviously not smart. But like what like what other things can I do to like gradually get myself there? So I think Mm -hmm. it's just like a huge like education piece of things, like the the education side of things. And that's why, you know, what we're about to talk about, which I feel like we keep inching off. um, Teaser. Yeah. It's like for me, like over the past few years, I feel like I'm literally learning something new every single day that I wish, you know, well, obviously everybody wishes they knew this before. Right. But I feel like Uh, even a year ago or even six months ago, like what I'm doing now in the gym, it's like, damn it, I wish I did that six months ago, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just like becoming so more, so much more efficient and like purposeful and intentional about, intentional about what I'm doing and understanding why it's like so eye-opening. So yeah. 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 I love that. I mean, so that's, yeah, that's one of the most exciting things about the project that we're putting out. And I think that's also why people have been responding so well, even though we've been very like cryptic and vague <laughs> about it because we're, you know, it's like the whole like marketing, we just got to like tease it before we tell you, but people, even the little bit that we've talked about it, we've gotten a lot of response because I think what we're doing And I feel like I can say this in a not braggy way because we're in this world and we are very much involved and have our fingers on the pulse that we're doing something that is really, really unique in terms of our approach to a fitness program, essentially. Um, So, I mean, like, should we just like, should we just get into it now? We've talked about it enough. Okay. All right. So. And I'll just maybe start talking a little bit about like origin and you, you jump in, but the first project that we did together was at the beginning of COVID and we just kind of quickly put together an online um, community and group for women to uh, learn a little bit from each other, to share some fitness and wellness and like mindset, mental health tips. We provided some resources. We did some like live Q and A's and we just kind of got a group together of people who were probably feeling pretty disconnected and pretty frustrated and out of the gym and out of their normal routine. And we were doing this for us as much as for everybody else. Cause we're like, this sucks. Like let's, <laughs> yeah. let's do something for our morale and for our health. And it was such a rewarding and fun experience. Um, and I think people really, the feedback was great. People really enjoyed it. They really got a lot out of it. The community part of it was massive. And you and I had a lot of fun working together and realized that we see eye to eye on a lot of stuff, um, which is great. And we're like, all right, maybe, maybe there's more to this. Maybe we can do some more things together that can help, help other people and help women in our, um, industry or women who are interested in fitness and strength and muscle building and all the things we're interested in who are maybe frustrated because either there's too much information out there, the information is deliberately misleading or false because there's a lot of that, Um, or just people maybe who have plateaued, maybe some people who need some tweaks, maybe just need some accountability. Like there's, there's a lot of reasons why people aren't hitting their fitness and wellness goals, right? There's a ton of reasons, some big, some small, 
some very deeply rooted and some that are as simple as there's this one little tweak you could make over here and it is totally going to change, you know, how your, your body works. Um, but we were just, we we're getting so much feedback about people who were frustrated or had so many misconceptions about what it is to be, um, a woman in the gym, working out and getting stronger and building muscle. And so, yeah, over these months, you and I were, well, all of our podcasts that we were doing together and mm -hmm. stuff like that were like, we just keep getting like these same questions over and over and these same like frustrations from people. And we're like, let's, let's like put together a course. Let's put together a mm -hmm. course, a program, whatever you want to call it. That's going to be like answering these questions definitively once and for all, we're going to provide a program to help women who want to get stronger and fitter and build muscle in the gym. But we're also going to build an entire curriculum around it that teaches you, like you said earlier, the why and the how and the what. So we're not just like, here's a program, go to town, hope for the best, hope you <laughs> get stronger. We're going to provide this program that's very detailed and intensive and, and research backed and studied, but we're also going to like walk you through it and walk through it with you and talk about why all of these elements are important and talk about why there's so much misconception and misleading information and cut through it. Um, so we've been working really hard for months because it's very in depth. <laughs> um, yeah. This isn't, this isn't just, you know, you're going to buy a PDF off the internet. There's a lot more to it. But I think that that's what people are looking for. I think people are looking for more than just, people want more than just tell me what to do. People want to learn. They want mm -hmm. to learn and understand it. Because I think what you touched on earlier was really important is that people are a lot more likely to make sustainable, healthy, lasting change when they understand why they're doing the things they're doing. It's great if somebody who's smart and famous and successful says, eat this thing. And you're like, okay, you seem to know what you're talking about. I'll eat it. Yeah. But then eventually when you get tired of eating it or it's not there anymore or something more delicious is in front of you, you're going to fall off. Whereas if somebody teaches you, here's what this food does to your body. Here's why it's so important. Here's why it nourishes you. You're going to remember that and think, okay, I know why I'm eating this. I know why I'm doing this. And that was, I feel like kind of the, the feeling behind us putting this program together, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's just another like education side of things. Like we both love to dive in. Like we're, we're nerds, right? We love it. And so, like I said, just sharing kind of all the things that we've learned and experienced for ourselves and kind of putting that into kind of a package, right? That makes sense, that has flow, you know, over the next three months, the three month program, which I might get a little ahead of myself here. Um, but that is kind of the the goal, right? Is to, you know, what are the biggest things that people are struggling with and how can we, you know, break down like the sciencey nerdy stuff into something that actually makes sense and that you will learn and be able to apply not just within the program, but like, like forever. Right. So mm -hmm. yeah. Do you want to announce? Oh, sorry. Go. <laughs> no, I was going to say, I mean, well, we're calling it, we're calling it drum roll, please. <laughs> yeah. The program is called Muscle science for women. Muscle science. Yay. So nerd, <laughs> nerd stuff, but muscles. I, I mm -hmm. feel like that sums it up really well. Um, but talking about, because we didn't really touch on this, the fact that it's for women. So I think mm -hmm. what's important there, and we talk about this a lot, and we've like written whole articles about it, which people will get in the coming weeks, about a lot of the misconceptions the differences and the ways we're not so different between men and women in building muscle. So very often I think it's approached like we're two different species, right? You're completely different. Your training is going to be different. Your bodies are different. Your minds are different. How you should eat is different. All of this stuff. And as with everything in health and wellness, yes, but no, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's gray. It's not black and white. No, we are not completely different creatures who need a completely different set of, you know, pink dumbbells in order to grow <laughs> muscle, but we also do have differences in our physiology, in our hormones, and to some degree in our sort of, uh, like the psychology, you know, like our approach to the gym and what we think is right or correct or appropriate for women and men. And some of these things we need to debunk and get past. Um, but we thought it was really 
important for this program to be for women. And it's for women as well as, you know, if you're a coach who coaches women, this is going to be very important for you as well, because there's just, there's so much information there, but it was really important that we answer these questions directly for women, because so much of this industry, the standard is you're talking about a man. And even if you're not specifying that you're talking about a man, like half of the, the fitness podcasts that I listen to, they're hosted by men and they're talking mostly to men. And if they're talking about a study or they're talking about a new training plan, or they're talking about whatever they're, they aren't even thinking that there might be women listening to, or that there might be some considerations. They're just, here's the baseline. And so, so often we're as women who are in this world, we're caught trying to figure it out and trying to like translate, like, does this work for me or how do I change it? And if I adjust it, how do I do that? And is it going to work the same? And is this even appropriate for me? They're not really speaking to me. I don't know. Um, And so we just thought it would be good to do this for women and outline some of the considerations. I think it's important to say, not necessarily differences, but considerations in our unique physiology and hormonal makeup, um, how things are going to be different, but then also outlining the way things are the same. So there, that kind of science of like, women need to be low fat and only do high reps and stupid Mm -hmm. shit like that. (laughs) Um, you know, we, we need to, we need to work through this, but in a very like clearly articulated way. So again, you kind of understand, you know, what the truth is and what the misconceptions are, why those misconceptions are there, um, and how to work through that for yourself and for any, you know, women that you might be working with. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think too, it's, you know, we're going to be diving into also like the training side of things in the sense of, yes, this program is, um, muscle science for women. So we are focused on building muscle and we're going to obviously dive into why that's important. And a lot of the misconceptions behind that and all the, like, you're going to get bulky crap. Like we're going to be chatting all about that. (laughs) Um, but also realizing too, that, you know, training specifically for your goal. So like the program itself, right? So we're going to go through the science, right? But then we're also going to go through the application of this. So you're going to get both at the same time. Um, But the application side of things is really understanding that, okay, for most of us, for most of us, I feel like, and especially like with people who will be interested in this program, not really like interested in like, you know, compete, maybe, maybe some, but not really, you know, interested in competing in like some, you know, national powerlifting competition or something like that, right? Where strength is going to be your, your most important thing we're focused on. A lot of us are just like, all right, I want to like build some muscle, you know, get, get stronger, you know, understand that, get stronger still, but okay, how do we do that? Because strength training and hypertrophy training it's not like they're separated. They go hand in hand, but there are tweaks and things that you need to understand if your main goal is to build muscle versus if your main goal is to get stronger because Mm -hmm. they're not equal. And that's something that takes a lot of understanding of the science of building muscle and the science of hypertrophy. And so that's one of the main things that I'm really excited to break down because once I understood that, I was like, oh, damn it, this all makes sense now. And now I can be super intentional about my training. I can train for my specific goal and understand why I'm doing what I'm doing and kind of apply that. So that's what I'm super excited about. And then also we're going to be diving into not just the, you know, obviously this program is is geared towards building muscle and and learning about that, but we will have obviously a nutrition component to it because you can't do one without the other, right? Mm-hmm. So we're going to go through all that. So we, and yeah. maybe we can, you know, dive into a few of the, the things within the program if you want, or if you have anything yeah. else you want to add. No, I like that idea. I mean, I think just to, to add to what you were saying, cause I do think that's really important. Um, it's something that I have kind of touched on a little bit before about the differences between hypertrophy, which is muscle growth and strength training, which is making your muscles stronger and have more capacity. Um, and I liked what you said there about how like there it's like a Venn diagram, right? Like they're connected. You can be doing both at the same time, but if you're really purposefully trying to do one or the other, there are going to be tweaks. Like you can get stronger without necessarily growing a significant amount of muscle. And you can also change your body composition and look much more muscular without getting a ton stronger. Um, so you can do both, but you can also prioritize one or the other and that's totally okay. It's knowing what you want to do. And then, like you said, I love the word intention. You can 
move forward with intention with your training and your eating and everything to get that goal. Because one of the biggest things I see in my coaching experience is people not actually knowing or having a clear concept of what their goal is. Everybody in the world wants to look good and be fit. Just everybody can say that. That's their goal. I want to look good and be fit. What does that mean? It means something completely different to me than it means to you and to her and to him and to them over there. They mean completely different things. So if you tell me as a coach, I want to get fit and look good. And I say, cool, I know exactly what to do. Run the other way. <laughs> like I need so much more detail than that. Yeah. So like for people, that's, that's part of the process too, is determining like exactly what is your goal? Because the more clear and tangible you can get about your goal, the more intentional and efficient and sustainable and practical you can get about working back from there to set up your plan and your strategy to achieve it. If you just say, I want to get fit and look good, you'll just flounder around forever, yeah. maybe accidentally get there, but not know that you're there because you didn't know what the goal was in the first place. Whereas if you say, and I'm not saying that these are goals you should have, but if you say, I want to lose 10 pounds of body fat, or I want to add 40 pounds to my bench press, like those are very specific, tangible goals that we can work with, right? Mm -hmm. So the cool thing about this program is we're creating a muscle building program that we're all going to work through together and follow. Um, but it's very scalable. It's very adjustable. Um, the entire program has like, we've got a video um, tutorial library so people can see how the movements work. We've got alternate exercises for everything um, in case you can't go back to the gym or in case there's just movements or, or exercises or things that you don't have. Um, but you can also then from there tweak to if you and I are both taking the program and I'm trying to specifically build more muscle and you're trying to specifically get stronger, we can make tweaks from there too. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool the way that this, I mean, not to toot our own horn, <laughs> but it's very cool how we figured this out where like we're creating a resource that is quite complete in itself, but there are so many ways you can make it your own, which is what we want to do, right? Because we don't want to just create this basic template. We want to create an educational resource that you can take and make your own and do what you want with it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then also like, you know, you said there's different routes you can go go down depending on where you're looking to go. So the nutrition side of things, like we have, obviously, like we mentioned, it's not like a like straight nutrition focus, but there is like, that's going to be a huge component of it. And also, you know, if you are, you know, someone who is approaching this program, because maybe you do want to lose some body fat, like we are going to give you the tools to set that up for yourself versus if you're like, oh, like I don't really, you know, necessarily want to lose body fat, but I want to get stronger. I want to build muscle. Okay, let's do that. Or if you're someone's like, I really want to build a lot of muscle and like, that's my main focus. I want to get stronger. Okay, well, let's set your nutrition up for that. So there, it really is all encompassing, which I think is really exciting because it, it's just like there's there's not one way to do everything, right? You have to have, like you said, a specific goal. Once you figure out that goal, okay, here are the tools and the strategies and the structure that you need to reach that goal. Um, so yeah, and Stoked. the cool thing is like the the first intake that we do of this, right? We're gonna have like a limited number of women who are gonna go along with us doing mm -hmm. it, and like each of these women could come out of the three months successfully, but with different outcomes, which is kind of cool too, right? So yeah. like, I'm really excited to see how it works, but let's talk, I guess, because I'm learning marketing people are telling me <laughs> that we need to give lots of information so that people know exactly what they're, you know, signing up for. So maybe we can talk a little bit about, um, and we're still kind of tweaking and finalizing mm -hmm. details sort of as we go, but, um, talk about sort of how the program is going to actually unfold. So like we said, it's a 12 week, 12 week, right? 4A12. Yeah. Three months, 12 week program. It's going to be obviously online, sort of an online community because that's what's happening now. Um, and each week we're going to have um, video content. So there will either be a lecture from one of us, like a presentation on a specific topic. So we're going to dive into things like 
Um, obviously the nutrition side, um, sort of muscle building 101. I think we're talking about supplements. Um, one of the calls we're talking about, um, biohacks or another way of saying this is just things to do to improve your health, but people like the word biohack. Um, so we're going to have all of these sort of like really information packed presentations, um, that people can refer back to and they kind of apply to the entire course. Right. Um, we're doing that every other week. And then mm. the in-between weeks, we're actually doing live Q and A's. So we get all the group together and we're going to talk about what's happening in the program, answer specific questions, talk about whatever's coming up. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, tell, tell us a little bit about like, so the actual program, like the, the exercise component of it, how is that going to be sort of presented to people? Yeah. So we will have, it's going to be obviously a 12 week program that goes along with the 12 week course. It'll be divided into three phases. Um, and within like the first week, we're going to go through like, okay, this is the program. This is what we're focusing on. You know, it's going to like, you're going to get the actual program, like, you know, as we go and go through like exactly what the focus is for, you know, this first phase. Right. Um, and then so on and so forth as we go. Um, and it's a very, again, not to toot our own horn, but it's a very structured program that I think for myself, like, and, and, and you obviously, we've taken a lot of time and put in a lot of work to structuring this program so that it is science backed. It is results back. Like it's not just like, okay, here's a bunch of exercises, go do them. Like there is literally an intention for every single thing. There's a reason behind every single thing. There's a flow behind it. Um, and so, yeah, so that's kind of the, the gist of like the, the, the application side of things. Mm -hmm. So the program is coming out. Um, remind me, is it going to be like made available week by week or segment by segment? So they'll get like the first months, the second months, mm -hmm. the third months, or how's that going to work? Yeah. So I think we're going to do, <clears throat> do them by phases. So phase one, okay. phase two, phase three. That makes sense. Um, but that might change. We might figure out, we want to do it a different way before, before it goes live, but yeah. either way, you'll be getting the program and you'll be, you know, getting a tutorial of how, you need to go about it. And then also, like you mentioned, like if you don't have access and this is one thing too, you know, putting this together through, you know, COVID and through a pandemic, it's like, you think about all these different things that you might not have thought about, you know, last year. Right. So mm -hmm. it's like, okay, you know, here's this exercise. Okay. How can I do the same movement pattern, the same exercise, get the same out of it, but I don't have a barbell, right? I yeah. I'm working out from home. I only have dumbbells or I only have resistance bands, like what's an alternative to this? And so that's one of the biggest things. It's like literally anybody for any equipment that you have can perform, can, can go through this program and get results. Um, obviously I think we, you have to have at least some, some type of equipment, right? Some resistance bands, some dumbbells, you could potentially not even necessarily need dumbbells. Um, but resistance bands and, you know, whatever, a backpack full of books, right? Mm -hmm. So there's alternatives for all of that. And so we give you that and we talk through it. Um, and we give you, you know, uh, options for different things that are like, you know, if you don't have resistance bands, like here, this is what we use, go to Amazon or whatever, just like you can get them for cheap, good quality. Um, so that's kind of one of the biggest things, like as we were putting this together, like, all right, how do we um, make sure that, you know, people can follow the actual exercise and they don't necessarily have to have access to a mm -hmm. gym, so... Yeah, it's funny because that's like actually a tangent that we could spend like an entire podcast on where there's sort of like a dichotomy, I think, especially with women's training, where on one hand, I want to encourage more women to be less afraid of weights and heavy weights and going in and like grunting and trying hard <laughs> and like failing at a set because the weight's so heavy. Like there's a part of me that wants more women to embrace that. Um, but there's also the sort of like, again, analytical, like research-based part of my mind. That's like, you, but you also don't need that necessarily. Um, and one of the things that we dive into in one of the lectures, um, I don't know which week or which one, but we're talking about the, the, concept of like muscle tension and muscle contraction and mind muscle connection and how that is infinitely more important than the number of plates you have on a bar or whatever. Um, and that I know for a fact, because I've lived it and I've seen it, that 
you can get stronger and get bigger muscles lifting less weight than the girl next to you. If you're lifting it really effectively and efficiently and in a focused way and with intention. Mm -hmm. So it's weird because these two truths do exist that I want women to embrace the idea of progressively and safely lifting heavy weights. Um, but also knowing, and for the people listening who are like, I don't have a gym with a barbell or, Mm -hmm. you know, my weights only go up to 25 pounds or something. I want you to know that you can still do a ton and get a lot of progress and find a lot of, um, pleasure and enjoyment and success in not having to crush super heavy weights. (laughs) So both of those things sort of exist. If that makes sense. I hope that's not like too confusing. No, no. I mean, I, I completely understood it. And like you said, the, the biggest thing that also had a, like a mindset, sh- mindset shift for me as well is just realizing that like our muscles are dumb, right? They don't know the difference between the weight of, you know, a barbell versus the weight of a dumbbell versus the weight of a backpack with books in it. Like, obviously there's nuance, there's different things within that, but like they know the tension we put on, they know the intention of what we're doing you know, and that we're going to get into all that too, right? It's so much more, especially with the goal, right? Especially with the main goal of hypertrophy and building muscle as the main goal. You can do so much there, right? You can absolutely build muscle at home. You can absolutely still get stronger, but with the main goal of building muscle, I think just understanding the why behind what you're doing, understanding that, you know, if I put heavier weights on this, yes, maybe I'll, you know, get stronger, but is that going to be as advantageous if I were to stay at the weights that I'm at and focus more so on my range of motion, focus more so on my mind muscle connection, focus on putting the muscle that I'm trying to actually grow under tension, like having intention with that specific muscle, understanding what that muscle is, right? How it works with your anatomy. Like we're going to be diving into like a bunch of that as well. So I think that's just like another, another thing that I've definitely learned, especially like over the, this last year of like, like personally for me, I've had to, I dropped my weight in half for my squats. Cause I really want to focus on the number one thing, building muscle and, and putting that the specific muscle under tension. And it's like crazy what's happened, right? Like yeah. brought my weight down in half and I'm actually building more muscle than I was when it was double. So it's like, yeah. And it's like, it's amazing oh what happens <laughs> when you throw your ego in the garbage. Yes. Honestly, it's amazing. Yes. Like, and like, even for like a very practical example, anybody who has ever done, like, if you have any kind of CrossFit or Olympic lifting background, but even like dumbbell shoulder press versus push press. Okay. So a push press, you are using efficiency and movement to move the heaviest weight possible without using your muscles. Right. So that's like a, it's a, Olympic lifting movements ish. Um, whereas a shoulder press is you using the muscles of your body to move a weight up, you know, in an extended position, you can push press heavier weight than you can shoulder press because you're using momentum and you're using things to help you. So if you look at it the same way as like a bicep curl, everybody in the world has gone to the gym and seen somebody, probably a guy, um, (laughs) terribly bicep curling a weight that's way too heavy and they're using all the momentum of their body and they're swinging it up. And if you told that person slow down times five and do not use any hitching or momentum and just lift it in a, you know, slow and controlled way, they would not be able to do it. That's that, that they are not strong enough to lift it properly. They're, they were not, when you're doing it, like, you know, a dummy trying to show off, you're using momentum to make it easier. Your muscle is not doing the hard work that it needs to do. Go to the gym right now and try to slowly, properly execute a bicep curl with half the weight that you normally do, but maybe twice the time under tension. And tell me that that's not harder than swinging twice the weight around. You know what I mean? So anyway, we have like whole videos explaining this, but it's amazing when you just stop saying, what is is this person next to me looking at how much weight I'm doing better up it by five, 10 pounds. When you stop that and you just say, how can I work the hardest right now? It it's amazing. The difference. Yeah. And work smarter too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not just work, like work smarter versus work harder. Like that's something that I've been focused on as well too. And drilling that into my client's heads. 
Also, just one thing I want to mention, though, just so that we don't kind of get completely on the other end of things, you do have to lift some heavy weights. Like, in terms of when I say heavy weights, I mean, there has to be tension there. And so it doesn't necessarily have to be heavy dumbbells or whatever, like a backpack filled with books and progressing with that. And, you know, because I think there is a side of things like, if you're, if you're listening to this talk right now, you're like, oh, well, why don't I just get the five pound dumbbells and do like 30, 40, 50 reps of that? And am I going to get the same thing out of that? Mm, no, it doesn't. There's, there's some things that we need to kind of unpack there. So there's, you know, two kind of sides of the spectrum and we need to mm-hmm. like, this is what the p- program is about. It's like educating yeah. on you, like educating you on, okay, you don't necessarily have to lift the, the most in the world and like beat that every single week and all of that, but you do have to be getting close to failure. You do have to be stimulating your muscles in the most efficient way Mm -hmm. for what you're doing. And you have to have enough volume. Like what the hell is volume, right? Like Mm -hmm. we're going to go into that, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to go into intensity. We're going to go into explaining all of these things that they're concepts that a lot of people don't understand. And I'm going to be completely honest. I did not understand them either until I started to learn more about them and apply them. And yeah, so- yeah, that's a tangent that I could go off forever. <laughs> I like it. We can't we can't give away all the goods in I just know, the right? first podcast. But um, another thing that I wanted to just touch on because I've had a couple people already because I've just mentioned the the program a couple times and I've had women coming back and asking some questions. And one of them is around like the amount of experience or like level perceived level of fitness or, you know, experience you'd have to have to get the most out of this course. And I think that's worth talking about here. Um, because I, I believe that, and I wouldn't want someone to sign up that I don't think would get something out of it. So I I don't Mm -hmm. think like, there's no reason for us to say every single person in the world should take it just so that we can sell some more tickets. Because I think that I, I want people who are really going to be interested and involved and get something out of it should be the people who sign up. Um, but I do think that there is a pretty wide range of experience that's going to benefit from it. I think rather than how like experienced or maybe like book smart about physiology and nutrition you are, I think it's more important that you are kind of willing to invest some time and brain power into it because this isn't like we said, this isn't a course where we're just going to like email you a PDF and you just do it on your own time and figure it out. This Mm -hmm. is like the theory and application. So we're giving you the stuff to go do on your own time, but we're also giving you material and we're teaching you things and we're asking you to interact with us. Um, So as long as you sort of have an interest um, and maybe not like completely new, like what is a dumbbell? (laughs) What is a macro? Like, as long as you generally like you're anybody who I think is probably listening to this, like you said, like, you know, the people who follow us tend to be a little like on the meathead spectrum already. So like, they're kind of into this stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't want people to think like, oh, I haven't been lifting for 10 years or I don't, I've never taken a course. So is this too much for me? I don't want people to think that it is because I think that I definitely think that, um, it's appropriate for you. And I also have had people reach out to me who frankly look quite a bit fitter than I am. (laughs) And I still think that they will benefit from it as well because we're all on different parts, like places in our fitness journey. And, and of course, you know, you can look fit and not be, or you can look not fit and be fit. So who knows from looking at somebody, but you could be a pretty experienced person. I have people who are like, I was a former bodybuilder. I'm a firefighter who competes in CrossFit. I, you know, like, but, but, but I have this plateau or, but I have this injury, this nagging injury, and I can't seem to figure it out, or I'm confused about this thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think that like, maybe if you're a professional Olympic athlete and you've got a team of people, like maybe you don't need to take this course. (laughs) And maybe if you've never looked at a dumbbell before, maybe you spend a couple of days in the gym first, but like generally speaking, the rest of you, Mm -hmm. I think are totally appropriate and welcome. And I think that you'll get a lot out of it. Do you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the main things that we've also been focused on as we're developing the program is not just like, you know, yes, I have access to a gym. No, I don't, but okay. There's different exercises that work with different people, right? So exercise selection is a huge thing. Um, We all have different anatomy, right? We all have different biomechanics. And so talking about that and educating on that is one thing, but then also giving you alternatives to, hey, you know, yeah, maybe you have access to a barbell and you can back squat, but 
is back squatting going to be the best thing for you right now for what your main goal is? Oh, maybe not. So why don't we, you know, choose an alternative to that that might be more advantageous for you? Um, or if you've been back squatting for a while and you're looking to change things up, like let's change things up, like try this, try this out. Um, sorry. Yeah. So I think that's one thing. And then also realizing that, you know, if you are someone who goes to CrossFit or Orange Theory or you are, you know, enrolled in a different type of training plan and you're like, you know, I don't want to stop that, but I still want to join the course. And like, is this for me? Because, you know, what if I want to continue doing CrossFit? I, I personally think you can absolutely do that because what we can do too is like, again, you're, you're learning the education side of things. And yeah, maybe you don't follow the program exactly, but you can take pieces of the program and we can, we'll, we'll talk about how you can incorporate this into your, your CrossFit training. So maybe instead of going to CrossFit five days a week, a week, you go to CrossFit three days a week, and then maybe you do two days of our program on the other two days. Right. So it's kind of, that's all in like our minds as we're putting this together is like, you know, being able to structure this in different ways for different people, because everybody is different for, you know, where they're coming from, what their specific goal is. And it, and also I do want to say like, we're not, like you said, we're not trying to like get as many people in the program from all these different angles as possible, but it's really understanding that, you know, the education side of things, like that's not really going to change, right? You still, if you're interested in building muscle, if you're interested in getting fit and toned, which we will dun, talk dun, about in a second. Dun. Our least <laughs> favorite must, word on yes, the Yes, you must understand the science behind it and be able to understand it in a way that makes sense for you. Um, so why don't we chat about that word for a second? Okay. Okay. Um, but I just did want to just to finish okay. up what you're saying. I think that that's why another reason why that like interactivity of this program is really good. The fact that we have those bi-weekly Q and A's because that also allows you not only all of the information and resources and alternate exercises and all the stuff that we're providing you with in the program, but you also have an opportunity in these Q and A's to ask these specific questions and say like, yeah, and I'm fit and I do CrossFit and all this stuff, but like, I really hate cleans. Like they hurt my back or I don't like back squats because this happens and maybe there's a physiological thing. And so this literally gives you an opportunity to like, we can, we can ask and answer specific concrete questions to help you tailor your programs. But again, when this is over and you continue and you maybe do the program for another three months on your own, you have all this information and, and ways to move forward on your own. So I think that's why, like, I'm excited about the, the live stuff too, because yeah, we're going to get like a sure. lot of, anyway, um, toned. <laughs> okay. Want to be so, toned? Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> so this is just something too that, you know, sometimes, and this is why we actually struggle a little bit to come up with a name for this program, because I feel like with women specifically, like if you see something like muscle building or hypertrophy, I feel like half the people, I mean, I didn't even know what hypertrophy meant for a long time. Right. Obviously I do now. <laughs> and it's been I, a few I years. Wanted to call, I just wanted editor's note. I wanted to call the program, like get huge and jacked and <laughs> buff and massive muscles. And Rachel was like, <sighs> women aren't going to like that. I'm like, I don't care. Like, Meh. and then I'm like, yeah, okay. No one's going to sign up for this program. It's like a cartoon of like a sweaty, like, you know, roided out like chick. I'm yeah. Like, like I, I'm like, all right, I'll tone it down a little bit, but that's kind of what I am hoping we like work through in this program mm -hmm. is that women don't like, aren't terrified of the idea of like getting big and strong and muscular. Like, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. No, no, exactly. And I think just kind of talking about this word toned, like if you want to be toned, you have to have muscle. T being toned comes from having muscle and having a relatively, I don't want to say lower body fat, but a body fat percentage, and we don't have to get into specifics here, that allows you to look the way you want to look. And getting toned means you have to put in the work to build the muscle first, because when you lose the weight, when you lose the body fat, if you don't have anything underneath that, you're not going to look toned. You're not going to look fit. You're not going to look quote unquote lean. And when women think like, you know, building muscle, I'm going to get bulky and big. The bulky and big that you see maybe is not muscle. That's body fat, right? That's body fat. That's covering the muscle. Mm -hmm. And so when you cut that, cut that body fat down, 
you unveil the muscle, you look lean, you look toned. But if you don't have any muscle, you don't look that way. <laughs> toned is literally the word that marketing people created to describe lean and muscular for women because we've been taught that saying muscular on women is a negative, bad, unappealing, unattractive thing. So we had to come up with another word that literally says the exact same thing, but in a way that is not going to be intimidating or scary because God forbid a woman is intimidating or scary (laughs) or muscular, but it literally is the same thing. Like if you look at a guy on men's fitness or you look at a woman on women's fitness, they're both toned. That's what they are. They have muscle and they have a low enough body fat so that you can see the shape and the definition of the muscle underneath the fat. And I mean, I will say too, that like the more muscle you build, the more, um, to a certain extent, fat, healthy fat levels you can have and still maintain that sort of attractive toned look that you want. Because I know for a fact that over, you know, the decade or so that I've been training seriously, my body has changed. My, the shape of my body has changed as I've added muscle so that when I go through my normal kind of cyclical periods of lower or higher body fat due to the weather, how much I'm eating, whether I'm staying in or not, whether I'm training for something or not, I still am much happier with the way my body looks, the way it fits into clothes, the shape of it, because I have that body shaping muscle underneath whatever the fat level is that I Mm -hmm. happen to have. And, you know, the other side of toned is the word that I probably hate even more than toned, which is skinny fat. Mm -hmm. Because again, I think it's a very gendered word. Like, I mean, you could describe dudes as skinny fat too, but we generally don't. Um, and that is basically describing the, um, sad outcome of when women want to be toned and they work too hard on the fat loss and not hard enough on the muscle growth part of it. Um, or they dismiss that altogether because they haven't understood the importance of the muscle part. And so they think that everybody has a fitness model's body underneath the fat. Mm -hmm. All they have to do is diet hard enough and do enough cardio, lose those fat levels. And you're going to have this beautifully shaped lean toned body underneath, which is Mm. generally speaking, not the case for anybody. Um, but certainly if you didn't grow up playing sports, if you haven't built any significant amount of muscle on your body, um, when you lose that fat, chances are, and again, we're, we're speaking in general terms because I think what people consider their ideal body shape is different for everybody. I Mm. happen to really like big, broad shoulders on myself and on everyone else. Some people don't like that. Some people aren't going to want as much muscle. Some people are going to want more muscle, but generally speaking, that muscle is universally appealing because it shows that somebody is fit and healthy and strong and subconsciously and consciously, we all react to that. Right. So, um, but if we've never been taught, especially as women, that we have to actually work for that and we have to nourish our bodies and train for that and build that muscle. Cause it doesn't just appear out of nowhere for most of us. Um, and so people chronically restrict their, their eating and they're hungry all the time and they bust their ass on the treadmill forever and they lose 20 pounds. And then they look in the mirror and they're like, why don't I like what's happening here? Because mm-hmm. we haven't done the work to nourish our body, build the muscle and create the shape that we want. Um, and the cool, the cool news about this and coming from a bodybuilding background, you really can shape your body. Um, we all look different and we all have different sort of baselines and physiology and even from our skeletal structure. And some people are going to be born with wider hips or wider shoulders or going to have a more hourglass figure versus a V shape or whatever it is but we have the ability through hypertrophy and through muscle growth to, to make adjustments to the way we look. And if we, you know, and I I don't know if we need to get too much into this because I don't want to obsess over aesthetics. I don't want to make it seem like that's the most important thing, but for a lot of people, it is important. And there's also nothing wrong with, again, wanting to look good and wanting to look good in clothes and show off your muscles and stuff. I just think it's interesting and, and useful for people to know that you have a lot of control over 
changing the shape of your body and how you want it to look in clothes. I mean, women are learning this over the last five, 10 years about growing a big ass, which everyone's <laughs> into growing a big booty and look, that looks good in your leggings or looks yeah. good in your bathing suit or whatever. That's you're shaping your glutes through muscle growth. That's what you're doing. And if you want to look like a nice hourglass in a tight dress, building out your shoulders and building out your legs and butt is going to make your midsection look smaller exactly. and give you a nice shape. Like you can, you can do these things. So mm -hmm. I think it's kind of cool. Like if you, if you take it, if you, if you look at it less, like I got to restrict, I got to be smaller. I got to work it off. I got to get rid of the fat. I got to do this. And like, it's a fear-based thing. And you look at it like my body is my temple and it's a work of art and I can, I can work in the gym to, to yeah. build it and grow it and make it look the way I want it to look. You can see it from a more positive, fun perspective than a restrictive fear-based, I have to look this way or else kind of approach, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's also like another reason why we're putting this program together is to give you the tools to do that efficiently, right? So you don't have to wait another five years to to learn these things like we had to do. Like, you know, we made the mistakes. We and and everybody's always learning. You're always gonna like quote unquote make the mistakes. That's part of it, right? That's part of the process. But like we've been in this for a long time. We've done this for ourselves for a long time and worked with several, several women. And that in itself, just having that experience has allowed us to piece this together and basically package it into a way that will give you this information in a structured way that you can understand and can make it much more efficient for you to reach your goal a lot faster. Um, and I'm not saying that like you're going to build a ton, a ton of muscle over a three month period. That's not really how it works. You will build a good amount, right? Like if you follow the program, if you understand and, and learn, you're going to build, but going beyond that, right? Um, taking these, what you learn from the program, taking the tools, the strategies, all that, you'll be able to continue, you know, moving forward and do it in an efficient way. Um, and then also just kind of on the other side of things, like that, obviously the aesthetic, aesthetic goals, I hate that word because I can never say it. Um, your as <laughs> aesthetic. Yes. Those goals are important because those, you know, we, we all want to look good. We all want to feel confident in our own skin and a bathing suit, blah, blah, blah. But building muscle is so much more than that as well, right? We all, we, we know that. And that's also what we're going to, you know, talk about as well. Like there's so many health benefits, longevity benefits, confidence mindset benefits to building muscle and to lifting weights and lifting in general. And I think that's something too that like some people don't think about as well. So we'll be mm -hmm. diving into that and, and the benefits of that, um, there was one other thing that I wanted to mention too, and I totally forgot, but that's so huge though. Like we didn't yeah. even talk about that. Like we're talking about looking better and being stronger in the gym, but we have like, and we, I think we wrote a whole article about this too, about the other benefits of strength building being things like you are literally better at life. Like yeah. you're going to have less aches and pains. You're going to have better injury prevention. You're going to be able to carry your groceries or your kid better. You're going to do your sports or the things you do for fun better. You're going to possibly be better at your job, whatever it is, because you're functioning better and you have better energy and you have better confidence. Maybe you have better posture. Like all of these things are going to improve your life. And then when you gain competence in the gym, because you're getting stronger and you're getting better at things that has a positive cascade effect for the rest of your life. You may gain confidence in other areas. Like I I've absolutely seen that for myself and for other women and men. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that one of the things too, is when you look at it like a holistic improving my life perspective, all the other stuff that comes like you become more metabolically flexible, you suddenly look better in your clothes. All of those things are like these amazing bonuses that you're like, Oh shit. Like I, I, I'm like smarter now. I understand this stuff. I'm better at X, Y, Z. And I look better now. And I can like maybe eat more carbs, like all of these things that happen that are like these positive side effects. I mean, yeah, maybe if people did, we just talked about aesthetics, but maybe if people did focus more on like the life changing, like this is a change in your lifestyle and your life and your approach to life. And then all of these other kind of things are like, great bonuses that come along with it. I mean, that's kind of a cool way to look at it too. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then just kind of <clears throat> also chatting about like fueling appropriately, like we're going to talk about that, like fueling appropriately for your goals and like understanding what that looks like. Right. So, you know, I feel like 
we have a good amount of followers who are into like the low carb lifestyle and, and keto, or maybe you're not, but if you are into that, like, okay, that can be beneficial for sure. Like there's so many benefits to that, but like, if that's not working for you anymore, or if you've hit like this kind of standpoint with your nutrition and you are looking to build muscle, you are looking to change your physique and get toned. I don't know why I said it like that. (laughs) Um, There may be some nutritional things that you can do and small tweaks that you can make that will make a huge difference to how you, you know, a how you train every day or how you perform, which in itself is going to allow you to become better, um, build more muscle, blah, 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 blah. So that's a big thing we're going to get into as well. Um, it's just fueling appropriately for the goal at hand and understanding the recovery side of things and understanding, like we're, we have a whole lecture, right. On recovery Mm -hmm. and why it's important, why you need that, all that jazz. So how to do it, you know, yeah, exactly. What recovery is and what it isn't. Cause again, it's like, I think so much of the education component of this stuff is like defining terms, kind of like we just did with the word tone. When you know what you're saying and when you know what you're asking for and when you know what you're talking about, then you know how to get it. So a lot of people throw around words. They throw around keto when they're not, they don't actually know what that means or what it's doing for them anymore, or they throw around fasting or you know, whatever it is. And it's like, let's get really clear because some people may think that they're recovering properly and they're not even close, you know, because they don't actually, we haven't really like definitively described what that means. So Mm -hmm. yeah, we're, we're, uh, we did, uh, we did a lot of work for this program. I feel pretty good about it. Like, I mean, I learned stuff as we were going through this, like, I mean, anyway. Um, okay. So we could kind of talk about this forever, but should we also maybe just, we've got some like kind of like loose schedule and dates. Mm -hmm. Like this podcast is going to come out around mid March. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and probably the same week that this comes out, we're also going to do an IG live after this comes out so that anybody who listened, who's interested in learning more, maybe wants to ask some more questions. Um, we're going to go live and talk about it. Um, and I guess we should, did we say the date that it's going to officially start? No, we didn't. Okay. So Official start date will be April 12th, Monday, April 12th. Um, That will be the first day of the program. Like we said, it is the first iteration. It is going to be a live program. We're going to have access to us, you know, throughout the entire three months. So we will be having limited spots um, just to make sure that we can bring as much value as possible. So if you're, we're going to link. Wow. It's not COVID. She's just talking a lot. Uh, (laughs) Here I go. I'll take take over. over. Okay. So it is starting Monday, April 12th. We're going to make it available for people to purchase, to sign up a few weeks before that. So we're thinking like end of March, Mm -hmm. um, we'll open it up because we want to give people time and we know it takes some people time to, you know, think about it. And it's an investment in your time and your money. So we'll give you guys a little bit of time, but it is kind of a first come first serve. Cause like you said, we're not going to have hundreds of people in this, um, first intake. And then I think what we're going to do after that is, um, depending on feedback from the people who take the first program, which I know will just be glowing, <laughs> awesome, happy <laughs> feedback. We will, you know, we're probably, we're looking at maybe offering potentially, um, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe we'll try to do this like a couple times a year, um, live. Mm -hmm. And then we may also package up, um, like a more sort of just like curriculum based, not live version, um, that will live online for people who maybe don't necessarily need the ongoing accountability kind of thing. They like to learn at their own pace. So I think, I think we were kind of thinking about offering both options. So for people who want to do the community based live Q and A's, like work through it with us, we'll do that. And then for the people who are kind of like, I just want the information and then I'll just take it. Like we can make that available to people too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have, yeah, but we haven't figured that out yet. So, yeah. um, but I think it, that makes the most sense, but yeah, we'll, and I think we'll also have, you know, further pieces of the program that will be added on as we get feedback and stuff like that. But, um, I mean, I think everything that we already have going right now, like this is definitely more than enough to, to get started. Um, yeah. what else did I want to mention? Gosh, I keep forgetting. So they can buy it. We'll, we'll probably just like shut down the, the sales page, yeah. I guess, when we've hit kind of the number. Um, mm-hmm. 
Yeah. What I mean, I think that's nice. it. I mean, in, in the meantime too, like anybody can send us messages on Instagram. You mm-hmm. can send us an email. We're going to be posting in our newsletters. If you guys follow us already, you'll have access to it. I've already been creating kind of like a VIP list and people who have been reaching out because they're interested. Mm-hmm. So they'll sort of get first to know. Um, so if you're yeah. listening to this and you're like, I'm in, I really want to do this, like send us a message. We'll make yeah. sure you're on the list. Or we're going to link. So in the show notes of this episode, we're going to link to this, the page where you can sign up. So basically you just, if you're interested at all in the program, you want to learn more about it before we actually, you know, open up the enrollment, um, just go to the link in the show notes and you'll just enter your name and your email. And we will, that's basically the, you'll basically get on the waiting list and you'll kind of have like the, the first dibs for access to the program since there is a limited amount, um, of spots available. So if you are interested, if you're listening, listening to this or watching this, um, just make sure you hit that link in the show notes. And even if you've sent us a message already and you're not on that, you're, you haven't signed up for the link yet, I would definitely sign up because we're going to be sending some more info, um, some more like sneak peeks of the program and things like that to everybody on that list. So definitely sign up um, if you're interested. First dibs on getting toned. That should be the name <laughs> oh of the program. <laughs> God. Oh boy. Toned. Maybe, maybe, maybe someday our legacy in this industry will be to abolish the word toned. Can you imagine? We could That'd like awesome. go down in history. Like no one <laughs> will use that word anymore because it will be like so universally reviled. Everyone's just yeah. like, that word sucks. Or we can like actually make it mean what it means, which would be awesome. The only way I would be okay with that is if we started using the word equally for men and women. Hmm. That's the only way I could get into it because it's the same. Why is there a special word for women being muscular? Why do we have to have like a special soft euphemism word? Like either call us both muscular or call us both toned. I'm going to die on this hill, guys. (laughs) Oh, wait, there's one thing that I just remembered that I was going to say. Okay. So when we were talking about the aesthetic side of things, oh my God, I said the word, um, cellulite. Okay. So the reason I'm saying this, because I have a lot of clients who are like, how do I get rid of this stupid cellulite? Okay. Yes. Body fat plays a role in that, but building muscle and like building up, most of us hold our cellulite around our hips and our butt area. If you have muscle there, that will fill out your butt, your hips, right? That, I I grew up with cellulite. My, it's a little, I think there's a genetic component to that as well, Mm -hmm. just how you kind of carry that. And it did not go away. No matter how much weight I lost, it did not go away until I started lifting weights and building muscle. And then Mm -hmm. it went away. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just one thing. I don't know why that's random, but I think a lot of women struggle with that. So that's something to realize too. Like if you want to build, build a physique, a shape, right. And also, you know, make it easier for yourself to get rid of that cellulite. Having muscle is your, that's where the magic's at, right? Having muscle is your friend in all cases. I mean, I think it's worth noting too, that like 99% of women have cellulite. I mean, probably 50% of men have it. Like it is extremely common. And to be also, to be honest with a lot of people, this is like a hard truth. 99% of women are going to continue to have it no matter how lean and fit you get. And 99% of fitness models also have it. Maybe they have a little bit, maybe it's very minor or very light because again, they've got this great ratio of fat to muscle um, and having more muscle and having less fat is going to reduce the visibility of it for sure. Um, But I think that's part of like the big mindset component that we're going to talk about too, is not to say that you should, um, settle or give up. And if you have goals and if you want to improve the way your body looks, but to also understand what realistic expectations are to understand that we're all still human and we're not ever going to look perfect because nobody on the planet looks perfect. Even JLo has pores. (laughs) You just don't ever see them. You know what I mean? She probably has cellulite too. Like, you know what I mean? So, Mm -hmm. um, it's a good, it's a valuable, like that is a valuable part of the conversation. Cause again, that's, that is more specific to women, but, mm-hmm. um, part of it is like, yeah, you can be toned and fit and look really good and be really strong and also still have a little bit of cellulite. Yeah. Cause guess what? We're human beings. So yeah, anyway. for sure. Yeah. No, I, I like that you mentioned that too. I was just kind of, yeah. you know, if it's something that you're looking to improve or something you've been struggling with, there's ways to minimize it that are 
beneficial for for you. Um, and then also before we wrap up here, I do want to just mention this program is also, you know, there I don't think there's any like age limit, right, to the to the program at all. I'm kind of just thinking about when I talked about that cellular side of things and the genetic side of things. Like, for example, like my mom is, you know, 60 something years old and I don't want to, you know, sh- blow her up here, but she's just started lifting weights last year. I think we talked about this before mm-hmm. and following a program, like a strategic program, following, you know, one of my programs, helping her out. And she's absolutely changed her body composition. She's absolutely built muscle and she's 60 plus years old. My sister, so who cool. is 32, 33, Same thing with her. She did not lift weight. She didn't understand the concept of, you know, having muscle and how that forms, you know, how that builds your physique. She started lifting weights and fall and like obviously with some of my help and and other things. And she completely changed her physique. And so there's no, I don't think there's any limit to the to the age range because every single woman, if you're 20 years old, if you're 90 years old, can benefit Mm -hmm. from understanding these concepts. So I think it'd be amazing if we got some like 89 year old badasses signed up and do some squats with us. (laughs) Super cool. Um, that would awesome. All right. I think, I feel like we've, uh, promoted ourselves shamelessly, uh, (laughs) enough today, but I think, you know, I, I am very excited. I think that this is going to be, like I said, at the beginning, something pretty unique and unlike, most of what you see out there when you're looking for online programs and support. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'm really, really excited to see the group that we get together in April and see how it plays out. And we'll continue to share stuff too. Um, I think it would be great if we did like a podcast wrap up. We'll obviously Mm -hmm. be sharing stuff on social media so that people who maybe didn't get in on the first round can see see what we're doing. Um, But I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah. And I was just going to say like, if you're listening to this, you know, for the first time after the program's already started in April, definitely still go to that link in the show notes because we're going to have an ongoing sign up list for the next round. So if you can get in, you know, first dibs on getting into that, um, or on that list for, for the next round, um, if you're interested, it'll always be open. So yeah, just wanted to make sure we got that across. Sweet. Awesome. All right, Rachel, you're my fave first dibs on getting toned Ditto. 2021. <laughs> Oh boy. We're going to have to like make I, some memes with this. Oh, I'm already on one step ahead of you. I like learned how to make a meme yesterday and like that's oh, really? my life now. So I mean, sort of, you know, remember my funny one that I made the other oh, day? Yeah. Anyway. Oh wait, you made that one? I don't uh, <laughs> Let's just say you made it. You made it. We'll see. You'll, you'll see some memes from us. Okay. Yeah. We're funny and we're clever and you're going to see some fitness related memes from us, but yeah. also very valuable courses. We're not just pretty faces and funny memes. All right. Yeah. Let's go before we say anything else, Dom. Sounds good. Okay. Bye.